Okay, so previously we looked at integration by parts for indefinite integrals. So we had the integral of u dv, we chose our u, we chose our dv, and then using the integration by parts formula, we could reverse the uh, derivative and the integral here okay, to make that a bit easier to do. Okay, we've done plenty of examples on that now. You should all be comfortable with it. Okay, now we're going to look at a little bit uh, more on this for the definite case. So what happens when it's not indefinite like this? What happens if there are bounds? There's a very, very small change that we make to the formula. Everything else is exactly the same. Okay, so let's say we have the integral from a to b of u dv. Okay, this is going to be equal to uv exactly like we had before. But now, whatever that function is, we evaluate that function from a to b. Okay, like we have uh, before with the definite integrals. Okay, and then minus the integral from a to b. Again, v du like we had before. Okay, so the only change here is adding the bounds uh, to the definite integrals there. And then this middle term, previously we just had the function there. Now we have the function evaluated between the endpoints. Okay, so in the end we should just get a number out um, as expected for definite integrals. Okay, everything else remains exactly the same. Okay, so let's have a look at an example with this. Okay, so number one, we have the integral from 0 to pi over 2, x cos x dx. Okay, so we've seen that one before, but now we've just got the bounds to worry about. Okay, so again, we choose our u and dv. Okay, we all should be comfortable with that by now. So u will be x, dv will be everything else. Okay. If you still uh, don't know how to choose the u and dv, like with this example, please see me in my office. Okay, so this is a very, very basic example. If you can't do this yet, you're going to struggle uh, with the quiz okay, and with the tutorial. So now du is dx and v is equal to, what do we get for that? Sine. Good. Okay, so we've got all the pieces, now we can just put it into the formula. Same formula as before, but just with the, with the bounds. So here, the integral from 0 to pi over 2, x cos x dx, this is going to be equal to, now we have to put the square brackets, because we're evaluating this, u times v, so that's going to be x sine x, evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, minus the integral from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, remember, we're putting the bounds on everything now. Uh, v du, so that's sine x dx. Okay, so I'm going to write this out fully, but again, like I said before, uh, if you want to skip the steps, okay, you don't want to write too much, that's fine, uh, but just be careful, right? If you don't show all your working, I can't give you part marks. But if you're comfortable evaluating that in your head and just putting the answer, that's fine as well. Okay, if it's right, it's right. Okay, so we're going to have pi over 2 sine pi over 2 minus 0 times sine of 0. Okay, so I'm writing it out fully just to show you what's going on. If you want to do it in your head, that's fine. Okay, minus, and then we're going to have this. The integral of sine will be? Minus cosine. Okay, and this goes between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, sine of pi over 2, that's 1, so we just get pi over 2 here. Okay, 0 times anything is 0, and sine of 0 is 0, so that's just 0. Okay, and then we have plus cos x going from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, so that will be pi over 2 plus. Okay, and then we can pull this out, so cos pi over 2 minus cos of 0. Okay, again, if you're comfortable doing that in your head, okay, you don't need to write everything out, that's fine. If you want to write everything fully, that's fine as well. Okay, pi over 2 
plus cos of pi over 2, that's going to be 0. Cos of 0, that's 1, so minus 1. Okay, the 0 can go, so we're left with pi over 2 minus 1. Okay, any questions about this? Okay, not so bad. Exactly the same steps as we had before, uh, but we've just got the, um, the bounds to worry about. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Um, and then for this one, I'm going to do it two different ways. I'm going to do it the long way like we've done so far. Uh, then I'm going to show you a nice trick to do it in a much shorter way. Okay, both ways are acceptable for the assessments. Okay, you can, you can use either. Okay, integral from 0 to 1. x squared e to the x dx. Okay. Um, so we'll see with this one, um, I think we've done this before, we're going to have to use integration by parts twice. Uh, so we're going to do it the long way, um, and then we're going to do it a much shorter way. Okay, now the shorter way only applies uh, if you're doing this integration by parts twice or more. Okay, so it helps out with that. Okay, so the choice of u and dv. Okay, e to the x, that's easy to differentiate and easy to integrate. So that doesn't help us. Uh, x squared, if we differentiate that, it becomes 2x. Okay, that's simpler. Uh, so we choose that to be u and everything else to be dv. Okay, so in general, if you have some polynomial thing in front there, uh, most of the time that should be u. So if it's x squared or x minus 1, x cubed plus 4x, some polynomial uh, as part of your um, integrand there, Okay, a good choice is to let that be u and everything else be dv. Okay, most of the time. Sometimes that's not the case, uh, but it's, it's a good uh, starting point if you don't know what to do. Okay, so u is equal to x squared, dv is everything else. Okay, so du is going to be 2x dx, and v is just going to be e to the x. So now, the integral from 0 to 1, x squared e to the x dx. Okay, again, square brackets, because we're doing the evaluation. u times v, u is at the top there, v is at the bottom there. So that's going to be x squared e to the x from 0 to 1, minus uh, v du. The du's got the 2, we can take that out. So twice the integral from 0 to 1, x e to the x dx. Okay, and notice for the second integral there, we still have that product, so we're going to have to do it uh, again, with that integration by parts. Okay, uh, for that bracket there, so evaluating that at 1, 1 squared is just 1, and then we just have e. If we put in 0, 0 squared is 0, so that goes away, so it's just going to be e. Or you can add it as e to the 1, uh, if you want to do that. Okay, minus twice, and now we're going to have to do integration by parts again. Okay, so we let u be x, we let dv be e to the x. So we're going to get u times v from 0 to 1, minus the integral from 0 to 1, v du. Now remember in our heads we had u being x, so v du is just e to the x. Okay, so as you go through the homework and the tutorials, uh, please try uh, just thinking ahead, um, in your head, what would go where. Okay, so before you start writing things down and then you notice you swap things around, think about what happens if u is x and dv is e to the x. Okay, if you swap those around, what happens? Okay, so please just keep that in mind. Think ahead of your choices. Okay, in this case it's obvious. In other cases, it's not so obvious. Okay, so just think about uh, which choices you're making there. Okay, so this is going to be e to the 1 minus 2 times. Okay, here, very similar to what we had before. If we put in 1, we're just going to get e to the 1. Put in 0, we get 0, so just e to the 1. Okay, minus. Okay, here is just e to the x, 0 to 1 again. Okay, so it's e to the 1 
minus 2 times e to the 1. Okay, and then over here, uh, e to the 1. minus 1. Okay, if we put in 0, uh, e to the 0, that's going to be 1. Okay, we've got quite a few brackets here, so let's be a bit careful. So we have e to the 1, uh, minus 2e to the 1, plus 2e to the 1, and then we've got a, a minus and a minus, and another minus, so that's minus 2. Okay, that goes, so we get e to the 1, minus 2. Okay, so I'll put the 1 there just for emphasis, but you can just write E, that's fine as well. Okay, so this was the uh, longer way. Okay, so we did that integration by parts twice, all in one calculation. Now I'm going to show you a much easier way um, of doing it. Okay, so if you look online, uh, you might see this referred to as the table method or the DR method. Okay, there might be other names as well. Okay, um, so it goes like this. So we're going to have the same thing, so x squared e to the x. Okay, I won't put the bounds for here, just to show you uh, the process, and then you can put the bounds um, at the end. Okay, so what we do is we form a table with two columns. One of the columns we call d, that is the part of the integrand that we're going to differentiate. Okay, like the u. Okay, the other column we call R for integrates, that's where we put the dv. Okay, so we're going to have d and R. Okay, and then down that uh, first bit there, the unlabeled column, we're going to alternate plus, minus, plus, minus um, as we go down. So it'll be plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay, okay so just uh, remember that, that alternating there. Okay, so in the first row there, we're going to put our uh, d, that's the thing we're going to differentiate. Remember, that's the u, so that will be x squared. Okay, and then um, in the other cell of the table there, we're going to put e to the x, that's what we're going to integrate. Okay, now going down the column, the d column, we're going to differentiate until we get to zero. So we know x squared, differentiated, we get 2x. Once more, we get 2. Once more, we get 0. Now, after that, uh, after that 0 there, it's just going to stay 0. So we, we can stop there. Okay, down the next column, we're going to integrate. But integrating uh, e to the x, uh, we're just going to get e to the x. So that stays um, as we go down. Okay, like that. Okay, so that's the table set up. Now, how do we get the answer from this? We're going to draw diagonal lines starting from the top going down. So x squared and then that second e to the x, this diagonal line here, we join up. Then the next one we join up and then the last one we join up. Okay, so we forget the first one. And then we go diagonally down from the d column to the r column. So x squared e to the x, 2x e to the x, and 2e. Okay, so that's the next step. The final step is we write out the solution. So along the diagonals, we multiply them. Okay, that gives us our term. And then we sum them up, but using those signs that we put um, in that first column. So for the first bit, we're going to have plus, so positive, x squared e to the x. Okay, and then the next term is 2x e to the x, but that comes with the minus sign. Okay, and then the last term is 2e, and then that comes with the plus sign. Oh, sorry, 2e to the x there, and then with the plus sign there. Okay, and since this was an indefinite integral, we have our plus c. Okay, so if we had to do it the previous way, we would have to do integration by parts. And then we would end up with another integration by parts we'd have to do on the side, and then put everything together. Here, this just organizes the calculation into one table. Okay, so all the derivatives we put down, and we don't have to say what u is or what dv is. We do the derivatives down there, we do the integrals down there, 
and then just take the diagonals, okay, the diagonals going down, and then alternate the sign. Okay, so again, this is just another method. You don't have to use it. So you can either do it how we did before, the integration by parts, then we do the other integration by parts and put it together, or you can do it like this. Okay, okay. so choice is up to you. Um, it's just another method that, that you can use. Okay, uh, let's have a look at another example with this table method. Okay, uh, and then of course, if you do have a, um, a definite integral with the bounds, then your final answer here, you just evaluate at the bounds, right? like, we, like we did before. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, uh, let's have a look at another example. Okay, so again, I'll put the um, indefinite integral, and then you can just pick some bounds, and then it becomes the definite integral. But the idea is the same. Okay, so let's say we have 2x squared minus 1 sine x dx. Yeah, so the fact that we've got that x squared over there, uh, remember if we, let, if we let that be u, we end up with the 2x, um, 4x, sorry, in this case, and then we have to do integration by parts again, right? Like we had in the other examples, whenever it's some x squared times something, usually we have to do that integration by parts twice. Okay, here we're going to try with the table method, and you can do the long way for homework. Okay, so we set up our table. Okay, we've got D and I, and then alternating the plus and the minus. Okay, so the thing we are differentiating, that's going to be the polynomial parts in front there, the 2x squared minus 1. Okay, and then everything else, the sine x, that goes in the integrating column. Okay, and then we do the same thing as before. So going down the derivative column, we take the derivatives. Since it's a polynomial, we're going to end up at 0 at some point, and we can stop there. Um, and then the integrating column, that's easy. It just goes sine, cosine, sine, cosine. Okay, so here we're going to end up with uh, 4x. Okay, uh, then we end up with 4, and then 0. Okay, uh, if this was cubic, then we'd have a few more uh, terms down the side. Okay, now the integrating column, the integral of sine will be minus cosine. Good. Okay, the integral of minus cosine, minus sine. Okay, uh, last one, integral of minus sine. Good. Okay, so again, you just alternate um, going down. Now, how do we get the answer? We look at the diagonals and then add up those products using those signs that we have on the side there. So the 2x squared minus 1, that gets matched up with the minus cos x. The 4x gets matched up with the minus sine x. And the 4 gets matched up with the cos x. Okay, so those diagonals, those mean products. And then we just add it up using those uh, signs that we have there. So the first bit, that's going to be 2x squared minus 1 times minus cos x. Okay, that's the first product, and it comes with a plus sign. The next product comes with a minus sign. So we're going to have minus 4x, and then that gets matched up with minus sine x. Okay, uh, and again, that's with the minus sign. And then the last one, uh, that comes with the plus sign. So that's a 4, and uh, just cos x over there. Okay, and plus c. Yeah. Okay, so uh, two homework questions with this. Okay. Confirm this with the other method. Right, so you pick your u, you pick your dv, you go through that calculation, uh, confirm that you get the same answer there. So that's the first part. And then the second part, 
find the integral from 0 to pi over 2, 2x squared minus 1. Um, so the same, the same thing there, but with the balance. So try it out the other way. Um, please uh, go back to the uh, revision stuff that we did on Wednesday. And whenever we had an example where we did integration by parts twice. Okay, there were a couple where we had to do it twice. Try it with this table method as well. Okay, so try it with the one we did before. Try it with the table method and see what works for you. All right, some people will prefer the table method. Some will prefer the other method. Uh, just see what's best for you. Um, if you do find another method online, if that works for you, that's fine as well. Yeah, but these are just two that um, uh, most people find useful. All right, uh, any questions so far? Okay, so everyone's fine with this table method. You know how to use that. Okay, so a few more homework problems with this table method. Integral x squared tan x. Okay, so here you can see again with the x squared, uh, you would have to do it twice. Okay, because of that x squared there. Okay, uh, integral x to the 4 uh, log x squared. Okay, integral e to the x sine x and integral e to the x cos x. Okay, uh, these last two, okay, they're a bit interesting. You have to do a little bit extra uh, to find the answer. Okay, but same idea. Okay, so you just follow the same, um, uh, the same thing we did before with the integration by parts or with the table method, um, and you'll see some pattern with this. Okay, so I don't want to spoil it, but just um, try that out. Okay, so these two... A little bit extra uh, thinking with that. Okay, but uh, those first two, just straightforward uh, table method or the long way. Okay, but try it out with the table method just for a bit of practice, and then you can see which one's uh, better. Okay. Any questions? Okay, so for that stuff we did on Wednesday, is everyone fine with that? Okay, so the solutions have been posted. Uh, any any problems with any of them? Okay, so everyone's gone through all 16 and you're all fine with all of them. Okay, uh, so to finish up with integration by parts, I just want to go through a couple of guidelines on what to choose for you and what to choose for DV. Now these aren't strict rules, okay, sometimes it changes depending on the problem, but most of the time, uh, this will help you out. Okay, so just some, some helpful guidelines. Okay, again, not rules, okay, just guidelines. It may uh, change. Okay, um, so the way I'm going to go through these is just with a few examples, and then I'll show you why we are making uh, those particular choices. Okay, so in the first case, if we have something like integral uh, x cubed sine x dx. Okay, so again, this is just an example. Um, you just need to see the pattern uh, that comes out of this. So in this case, we've got a polynomial type function and something else. Okay, so here I just put sine x as an example, but that's just something else, right? So here we've got polynomial. And something else. Okay, doesn't matter too much what that something else is, uh, it's just a guideline, right? Okay, so here we have done this a few times now. The polynomial bit, we set that to be u. Everything else we would put dv. Okay, so that's the first thing that you should be looking for with integration by parts, some polynomial bit and something else. The polynomial bit, typically we would set that to be 
U. Okay, number two, integral x squared sine inverse like that. Okay, so for the second bit, we've got something, typically a polynomial and a trig inverse function or inverse trig function. So here, uh, it's a bit uh, switched. Okay, integrating sine inverse, that's quite difficult to do, right? But the derivative, we know what that is already. We covered that um, last semester. So here we let the sine inverse be u, because we can differentiate that. Even though that first bit is a polynomial, and the previous guideline said polynomial, right? In this case, it is easier to differentiate sine inverse. So here, uh, so this could be sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse, some inverse trig function, we let that be u. We let that one be u. Okay, um, and then anything else on the other side, uh, we let that be dv, right? Because that's the, the rest of it. So the rest, dv. Okay. Number three. Okay, so uh, this number three is in terms of um, the log function. Okay, so let's say we have the integral x squared log x dx. Okay, so it doesn't have to be x squared, but some polynomial bits and the natural log. So here, uh, this could be any polynomial. Okay, and then here, that's the, the log. Yeah, uh, we know that it's much easier to differentiate the natural log. It just becomes 1 over x, and that's quite easy to work with. So in these cases, uh, we choose u to be the natural log, and then dv is everything else. So that will be u, and then we get 1 over x, um, and then everything else we call dv. Uh, now, that's not always the case, so just as an example, uh, the thing we did yesterday with the natural log squared, okay, so we have the natural log of x times the natural log of x, sorry, okay, so I just showed one way of doing this, here we differentiated the one, and then we integrated the other, okay, that was um, one of the examples we did on Wednesday. Okay, so here you see if we've got two natural logs, okay, one of them will have to be u, the other one will have to be dv. Okay, so it just depends on, on what you get. Okay. Okay, number four. So here we have e to the x sine x dx. Okay, so something like this. Okay, so what do I mean in this case? I mean the first factor is easy to differentiate and easy to integrate. So that doesn't help us. The second factor, that is also easy to integrate and it's also easy to differentiate. So what do we set to what? Okay, in fact, it doesn't matter. So here, you can either differentiate e to the x and integrate sine x, or you could do it the other way, uh, other way around. Okay. So it does change your calculation a bit, you know, what you're integrating, what you're differentiating, but you get the same answer in the end. Okay, so here, so let's say the first function is, uh, so both of them here, easy to differentiate. Uh, remember, when I say easy, I mean we get something simpler uh, that makes things easier for ourselves. Okay, so easy to differentiate, easy to integrate. Okay, so here we can do it two ways, doesn't really matter. Uh, please try out both ways, okay, just to convince yourselves that it doesn't matter. Okay, so number one, u equals e to the x, dv equals sine x. Okay, that's our first choice. Okay, uh, so this is homework. 
Okay, um, and then the other way we, we swap it around. So we let u be sine x and dv be e to the x. Okay, right, there's nothing that can tell us which way to go. So uh, let's try both ways and we'll see we get um, the same answer. Okay, uh, so that's the, uh, the main uh, things that I just want to show with these guidelines. So, just to go over this again, so polynomial, something else, use the polynomial. Trig inverse functions, we differentiate that. Uh, if you've got the natural log, you differentiate that. It's easier to do. If you don't know which one to do, and both seem uh, about the same amount of work, it doesn't matter which one you pick. Okay, so that's just a few uh, guidelines for that. Okay, uh, would anyone else like to add something to this list? Maybe you've seen it in your, in your homework that you've done before. Any suggestions? Okay, uh, so we'll leave it at that for today. Please remember for next week uh, that you have your trig identities uh, written down. Okay, so when we do these trig integrals, we're going to have a lot of identities that we have to use. Okay, so the ones with sine squared and cos squared, your double angles, half angles, sec squared, cosec squared, all of those ones, uh, we're going to be using all of them. Okay, so please have them written down somewhere so that you can reference it uh, for the lecture. Okay, I won't be going over those trig identities. I'm going to assume that you have them with you or you have them memorized. Okay. Again, if you have any problems with this, uh, please go through the tutorial, see what's troubling you, and then you can come to my office. Yeah.